We reversed gum inflammation, reduced yellow stains, and cleared stubborn plaque in a 68-year-old patient. From this to this, all within just three weeks, using a natural, easy-to-follow three-step ritual. Welcome back to the Senior Health Podcast, where modern science meets timeless wisdom from Japan's oldest practicing doctor. Today, we're shining a light on one of the most misunderstood and underestimated topics among seniors, oral inflammation. And sitting across from me is someone who has lived over a century, still sees patients every week, and has spent a lifetime observing what truly strengthens the mouth and what silently breaks it down. And he's not just here to talk about plaque or stains, but to challenge us how we think about oral health and the entire process of aging. Doctor, welcome back. John, it's a gift to be back. But let me ask you something right off the top. If nearly 70% of adults over 65 have gum disease, how can we keep brushing it off as just aging? When we know now from both American and Japanese research, that this quiet inflammation in the gums is often the first whisper of deeper trouble in the heart, in the brain, and sometimes even in our lifespan itself. And this isn't just some statistic. It's real life. I know this hits close to home for many of our listeners, especially those who've done everything right. Maybe you floss every day, brush after meals, never miss a dental appointment. And still, your gums bleed, your teeth turn yellow, and there's this stubborn film that never quite goes away. If that sounds familiar, I want you to know, you're not alone. That's the real issue, John. This isn't rare. I see it constantly. Older adults who do everything right and still deal with receding gums, tooth sensitivity, and stubborn inflammation. Because the deeper problem isn't dental, it's metabolic. It's about blood flow, enzyme loss, and immune decline. That's why today's episode is so important, and I urge everyone to stay. You will uncover the real causes behind plaque, gum breakdown, and stains after 60, and how you can reverse them with three natural habits still used in Japanese clinics today. Without chemicals or scraping, and please leave us with a like and a comment so this platform will send this video to people like yourself. That would boost our reach indeed, doctor. Now you're saying, if we only focus on the symptoms, we might miss the deeper warning signs entirely. That's exactly what I'm saying. And that's why this conversation is so urgent. Because there are three hidden patterns I see again and again in seniors. Patterns that quietly erode the foundation of oral health. But once we name them, we can interrupt them. And when we do, we don't just clean teeth, we restore strength from the roots to the brain. That really resonates, and it actually reminds me of my father in law. He brushed religiously, never missed a checkup, and still developed gingivitis in his early 70s. At first, we blamed the toothbrush, then the toothpaste, but no one stopped to ask what was happening inside his body. And that's where most people go wrong. We treat what we can see, the bleeding gums, the yellow stains, while the real problem keeps unfolding beneath the surface. So let's get into it. Why do so many seniors develop plaque, discoloration, and gum disease, even when they're doing everything right? Because they're fighting the wrong enemy, John. Plaque isn't just leftover food or poor brushing. It's a living structure, a biofilm made by bacteria to shield themselves from oxygen, saliva, and even your immune system. After 60, your mouth changes in ways most people never notice. Saliva dries up, blood flow slows down, and the gums become thinner, less defended which gives these bacteria everything they need to dig in and stay. That reminds me of something I read, 
that over 95% of bacteria in nature live in biofilms. So this isn't just a mouth issue. It's how microbes survive everywhere. And if your mouth is dry, acidic, or inflamed, that's like giving them a green light. Exactly. And one of the worst triggers? A diet high in refined starches and sugars. Most people think of sugar, but the bigger danger comes when sugar combines with starch, like crackers, toast, or processed cereals. That mix turns sticky, coats the teeth, and feeds the bacteria that form plaque. Over time, that plaque calcifies, becomes tartar, and burrows into the gum line. That's when you start seeing bleeding, sensitivity, and deeper issues like bone loss. And most toothpaste does nothing to break it down, because the root isn't mechanical, it's chemical. So it's not about brushing harder. It's about changing the environment those bacteria live in. Precisely. You can't scrub your way out of imbalance. You have to shift the terrain. That really makes me think. If we can't just scrub it away, then what's the gentlest, smartest way to change the conditions inside the mouth so that plaque can't keep coming back? Yes, stay with me, everyone. The first and most effective way to start shifting the mouth's environment is not with force, but with chemistry. Before anything else, we need to change the pH. Harmful bacteria thrive in acidity, but when the mouth becomes more alkaline, that biofilm, the root of plaque and tartar, starts to break down. So the first method I recommend is a gentle homemade paste made from natural ingredients that rebalance the mouth without damaging the enamel. So instead of attacking the teeth, we're creating balance around them. Exactly. You're not killing bacteria. You're dissolving their hiding place. And that starts with baking soda one of the most underestimated ingredients in oral health. That surprises me. I always thought baking soda was too abrasive, that it could wear down enamel over time. But you're saying it can actually protect it? Only if it's used the right way, in moderation, with water and never with harsh brushing. What makes baking soda special is that it's alkaline, that helps neutralize acids from food and from bacteria and gives your enamel a chance to remineralize. That makes so much more sense now. It's not just a scrub, it's a reset button for your mouth. Then we add hydrogen peroxide, but only in a safe, diluted form. Just a small amount of food, grade 3% hydrogen peroxide, helps to break through biofilm and release trapped bacteria. It also whitens the teeth, not with bleach, but by releasing oxygen, which makes it harder for harmful microbes to survive. So you're targeting the source, without chemicals that kill the whole microbiome. Precisely. We don't want to wipe out the mouth's ecosystem. We want to guide it back to balance. And the clove oil, that's the part that really intrigued me when I first read about this. Why that? specifically. Clove oil has natural compounds that calm inflammation and numb pain, but more importantly, it breaks into the structure of biofilm. That makes it harder for plaque to harden into tartar. And all of these work together, not just to clean the teeth, but to shift the whole chemistry of the mouth. That's what makes this so powerful. It's not a surface-level solution. It's a foundational one. And it's easy to overlook, because it sounds too simple to work. But I imagine the simplicity is part of the reason it does. Exactly. And when patients use it, I always remind them, this isn't about scrubbing hard. It's about working with the body. A soft toothbrush, small circles, once a day is enough. Let the ingredients do the work, especially around the gums, where plaque often hides. What about people who want to take it a step further, who've already tried baking soda and peroxide, but want deeper repair for the enamel? For those who want to go deeper, to not just neutralize plaque, but rebuild what's been lost, 
I often recommend adding a mineral called hydroxyapatite. It's what your enamel is naturally made of. In Japan, we've been using it in clinical settings for decades. And now more research in the US is confirming what we've seen, that this mineral can fill microscopic cracks and restore density to aging teeth. So it's not just stopping damage, it's helping reverse it? Exactly. It works almost like scaffolding, giving your enamel the building blocks it needs to heal. And unlike fluoride, it doesn't carry the same risks if swallowed. That's powerful, because I think so many people assume once the enamel is gone, that's it, that there's no way back. But you're saying we can help the body rebuild it, at least partially. Yes, and especially in the early stages. Microcracks, sensitivity, early decay. Those are all areas where hydroxyapatite can make a difference. It's not magic, but it's measurable. And the best part is, it's naturally biocompatible. Your body recognizes it because it's already part of you. That makes this feel less like a supplement and more like restoring something we were always meant to have. Exactly. I've seen patients who used it consistently over months and came back with smoother teeth, fewer sensitivity complaints, and even improved gum texture. That kind of slow repair isn't flashy, but it's real. And where do people find it? Is it available as part of a toothpaste or something they mix in? There are a few good options. Some natural toothpaste brands include microcrystalline hydroxyapatite in small amounts, but for therapeutic use, I often recommend buying it in pure powder form and mixing a small pinch directly into your homemade paste. So in that sense, it becomes part of the daily ritual, not just a one-time fix. Exactly, and it's the consistency that creates the results. Not how strong the mixture is, but how steady the habit becomes. That really echoes what you've shared before. Healing isn't about force, it's about rhythm. And that seems true for every part of the body, from the gums to the brain. We're not forcing change, we're supporting it. And for anyone who feels like it's too late, that message brings a lot of hope. So please everyone, keep your attention. Let's dive into the third part of this solution, food, which might be the most significant of all, right? Food is the most overlooked part of oral health, and yet it shapes everything, not just what we eat, but what our body does with those nutrients. In Japan, we've long understood that healthy teeth are built from the inside out, and one of the most important nutrients for that process is vitamin K2. K2, that's the one that helps move calcium, right? Exactly. It acts like a traffic controller for calcium instead of letting it build up in soft tissues like arteries or gum pockets. It redirects it into bones and teeth where it belongs. I remember reading that traditional Japanese diets are naturally rich in K2 from things like natto and certain fermented foods but most people in the West aren't eating anything close to that. That's true, which is why I often recommend grass-fed butter as a more accessible option. It contains both vitamin K2 and vitamin A, another critical nutrient for enamel strength and gum resilience. And it's not just tradition. We have modern research backing it now. In both American and Japanese studies, we see that Higher K2 intake is linked to lower rates of both dental decay and arterial plaque. That's such a powerful overlap. The idea that what protects your teeth might also protect your heart. Exactly. And that's where this conversation becomes much bigger than the mouth. Because the bacteria that create tartar in your mouth, they've also been found in arterial plaque and on heart valves. So this isn't just cosmetic, it's a whole body issue. It really reframes oral care as something closer to disease prevention than hygiene. 
It does. And the good news is small changes in diet can have big effects. Just adding more K2 rich fo foods, healthy fats and cutting back on ultra processed starches gives your mouth a fighting chance. So this isn't about eliminating everything you love. It's about adding what's missing. Exactly. It's about restoring the balance modern diets have stripped away. And once that balance returns, the gums tighten, the plaque slows, and many people even notice their breath improves. That's what makes this so empowering, that something as simple as butter or oil can ripple through the whole body. And it helps explain why the mouth is often the first place the body shows imbalance, because it's exposed, sensitive, and quick to respond. Which makes me wonder, what's one thing someone could do tonight, something small before bed, to start shifting their oral health in the right direction? The simplest thing you can do tonight is swish gently with warm water and baking soda before bed. Just a small pinch, enough to reduce acidity and create an alkaline environment while you sleep because nighttime is when bacteria do their deepest work. The mouth dries, defenses drop, and biofilm thickens. But if you change the terrain before that happens, you stop the cycle before it starts. That's such an easy shift. And yet, it sounds like it could have a huge impact, especially for people who've tried mouthwashes and harsh rinses that just dry them out more. This feels different more like support than attack. Exactly. And once that habit is in place, the rest builds naturally. Maybe the next week you add the paste. Maybe the week after that you explore vitamin K2 rich foods. This isn't a crash diet for your teeth. It's a rhythm. And rhythm is what restores the body. It's incredible how something as quiet as swishing baking soda could be more powerful than expensive rinses or deep cleanings. Because it's not just what you do, it's when and how you do it. Gentle steps, repeated daily, create the strongest foundation. That's a message I hope everyone takes to heart, that real healing doesn't come from extremes, but from consistency, nourishment, and time. Everyone, please help us reach more people. You can do that by simply liking the video and leaving your thoughts in the comments.